This question is from Erin. Erin um, asks, I'm a massage student close to graduation. Last week in our student clinic, we had a woman with two hip replacements. She had spent the previous weekend on a 20-hour road trip and fell tight in her hip as a result. Normally, with joint play would be indicated, but we weren't sure how the hip replacement might affect this, this technique. We ended up playing it safe and among other techniques performed the iliopsoas uh, release for her, which seemed to help a little. So, um, for artificial joints, is it a caution, a contraindication? Would it be beneficial? Um, with, with that, with uh, contraindication, um, it all depends on how long it's been. So, let's say a month or so. Uh, if it's been over a month since the surgery and everything seems to be healing right, that's when you really want to get into the scar tissue and start breaking it up. So, with cross fiber friction or mouth fascial release, um, those kind of techniques. And the iliopsoas, um, getting into the psoas major, the iliacus, and you might even want to get into the pectineus a little bit too, and other muscles that attach to the pelvis area, like the rectus um, femoris. I'm mean, sorry, not <laughs> um, yeah, the rectus femoris, and also um, another one you can get into is the rectus abdominis. So you can try all those different kind of techniques, and the psoas is probably one of the bigger ones if if she's having low back pains. In, in those areas. Um, then then you also ask too is, let me see, I don't even know how a replacement for moral head is attached into that area. Is the same capsule and ligament or is it all new? Do you have any experience in joint mobilization or artificial joints? My mom um, had both her knees replaced uh, about three years ago. And she kind of made the mistake of having both her knees done at the same time, and she's never really totally um, recovered from that. She even has less range of motion than she did before, too. That's a problem. Because when, when you have both the knees done at the same time, um, sometimes you um, tend to be a little bit tight in a way. Um, you don't get um, the chance to build up strength in the other, other knee and other areas. So that's the biggest problem with that. And honestly, I don't know how um, it's actually done, but I'll, I know a lot of times they'll use uh, fake ligaments and fake joints and those kind of things um, just to help um, fuse those areas in. But a lot of times, again, they don't have as much range of motion, so that's why um, stretching would be the most beneficial, probably. And if she's, I mean, you're working with iliopsoas, sometimes if they're in the supine position, just bring the leg off the table a little bit and bringing it down will help stretch the iliopsoas some in that area. But if you want, you can start by just bringing the knee up to the chest just to totally relax it and then slowly bring it down to help stretch out that area. And I myself, any of those kind of injuries or problems, I love digging around and, and finding the range of motion. So um, if you can do any kind of muscle testing beforehand and see exactly what areas that you need to um, um, you really concentrate on too. That's the biggest thing. But with with any any of those kind of injuries or problems, it's best to ask the client what they feel. So have them communicate with you as much as possible. Um, with deep tissue, it gives you permission to talk to them. That's what's nice. So a fluff and buff, aka Swedish massage. A lot of times, um, the person doesn't want to talk as much. But with um, deeper work, it gives you permission to talk. So that's why you want to get that information. And if in doubt, have a pathology book by so you can look up those things just in case. And the worst case scenario, let's say you just do not feel comfortable, um, get a permission from a doctor just to be safe. Or even their chiropractor. Um, especially if you work in a chiropractic office, that's what's so nice is there's your superior so you can just go ask them um, to make sure in their, any areas to concentrate on the most. And, um, and I think I got it all for that. And yeah. So any other comments, suggestions, if anybody else has run into double hip replacements, please leave the comments below. And thanks for asking the question.